typically, growth is hard. It stretches us and often hurts, and we naturally look for what is comfortable and easy. However, God wants us to mature in every area of life, but maturity doesn't come easily. There can be no growth without testing, and there can be no testing without difficulties. Nevertheless, in your darkest hour, you must embrace your faith. Join Pastor Scovens for this powerful series as he unpacks what we must do when our faith is under fire. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was stuck in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. When Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, arise up quickly, and his chains fell off of his hands. Forgive me just about 15 minutes to talk to you tonight. And I want you to, I want you to do this. I want you to look at somebody and say, what to do when somebody you know is stuck? I'm going to get happy here in a minute. I said, look at somebody and tell them, what do you do when you know someone who's stuck? You may be saved. The word of the Lord is an amazing word, powerful in all of its possibilities, unlimited in its scope. It is a marvelous, powerful and dynamic understanding of the mind of God. I love the word of the Lord because the word of the Lord is the incarnate Christ. Whenever you start talking about a word, you're talking about fulfillment. You're talking about the prophetic utterances that comes out of the mind of God. I don't care what we do and how much we do it, there should never be any book in the Bible, in the church, that has more impact than the Bible. It, 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 I don't care how many books you read. I don't care how many places you go to further your education with boundless understanding. There should never be a book more powerful and more persuasive than the word of the living God. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and we beheld his glory. I want to take a few moments tonight to really take some time to unpack this particular moment in the life of Peter, who I consider one of the unique individuals, same one that in the book of Matthew chapter number 16, when he had come into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I the son of man am? They said, some said that thou art Elias, Jeremiah's. Or one of the prophets. But he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Peter, the son of Simon Barjona, answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Hagias Christos, the anointed one, the son of the living God. He said, Flesh and blood hath not revealed it to you. <laughs> Some things you ought not get from the university. Some stuff you ought not get from your next door neighbor. Some things, I better leave it alone because 
I be, I'm a ghost child. I believe some stuff ought to come to you from the revealed will of God. So I want you to look at somebody and tell them I got it from God. When you get it from God, you won't have to worry about what nobody else says. When you get it from God, you won't have to worry about how people think about you. Because whenever the Lord gives you an authentic word, I wish I had somebody here tonight. It's a word that you can count on for eternity. So it's important tonight that as we understand that, that we use this moment in biblical history. Peter, the one who I call loquacious and sometimes not the most uh, strong and viral, the one who actually said blankety blank, I don't know the man. Same, same one, same one that cut the centurion's ear off at a crucial moment when they came to arrest Jesus and Jesus said to him, man shall not live by the sword because if you do you're going to die by the sword y'all don't have to help this is the same one loquacious talkative Peter but Peter's uh, abilities he wasn't he wasn't too uh, arrogant but he was he was aggressive in his faith aggressive in the challenges that he faced and there were moments in his life that he was not going to allow anybody to back him down he was I don't, he was not going to let anybody frustrate him and tell him that what he believed was not the truth. He was not going to do that. He was not a cultivated academician. He was not a seminarian. He was just a fisherman who believed that all things work together for good to them that love God. He was a consummate and powerful individual. So now we might as well figure it out whenever there is an anointing on your life. Now, I may not get further than this because I'm getting happy now. But whenever there is an anointing on your life, look for difficulty. Folk that don't have an anointing don't have many problems. Oh, I wish I had help. But when, when, when God has favor on you, oh God, when the Lord puts favor on your life, when, when an anointing rests on your bones, the people know that God is doing something. Because see, some, when an anointed person is anointed, you may know something negative about him, but it won't stop the anointing. You may say, I don't think they everything and a bag of chips, but you can't stop the anointing. That's why a lot of folk are jealous for you because you have an anointing on your life. And because of the anointing, every yoke. I wish I had, Chuck, I wish I had time to look at the power of the anointing because I wish the church would get anointed again. Oh, we we are, we are we are consummate when it comes to understanding, you know, you know, pomp and circumstance and and flower and fluff and all of that's good. But the devil doesn't care nothing about your fluff. He doesn't care about any of that. He wants to know: Do you have enough power to arrest? His progression in your life. And you better, might as well get it right. You might as well understand that when you're anointed, you're going to come under attack. When, 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 when God has favored you, look for it, look at it, because there's going to be a problem and you might as well get used to it because the devil got to stop you because God started you. And if he can do whatever he has to, and you wonder, what did I do to them? What He'll make folk you like, dislike you. He'll cause folk to walk around you and not speak and try to put you in a depressed situation. And you're wondering why things are happening to me like this. It's not because you've done anything to anybody. It's simply that you have an anointing. I feel like screaming. It's your anointing that they're jealous of. They don't care nothing about you. They didn't care. They didn't care. They didn't care about, they didn't care about Samson's laying with Delilah. They wanted his. That's what they were after. They sent her to get his anointing. I, 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 be, I better leave that alone. Because what I'm trying to tell y'all, the devil will send somebody. Mm, mm, mm. He will lease 
someone to wreck your anointing. He's not after you. He doesn't care nothing about what you're doing. What he cares about whether you're anointed. He knows that because of the anointing, every yoke. Somebody say every. Not, and you know, some of us don't want to believe that. But we, we want to say some of it. No, he didn't say that. Because of the anointing, every. Everybody holler every. Every yoke shall be broken. So he was, he was, you know, Peter, Peter was loquacious and he was doing stuff that he hadn't any business doing, running his mouth without, without any kind of, of, of filter. He was cussing Peter. He, he had a lot of issues. But you know, God uses folk with issues. Because issues will keep you humble. Okay, y'all don't want to help me, do you? I said issues will keep you humble. That's why a lot of folk don't understand why he used them with all of their hang-ups, with all of their issues. God is still using them because God uses folk with issues. Do I have a witness up in the house? You wonder sometimes why God used you. Because when you look at you in the mirror, you would say to yourself, I wouldn't use me. You look at yourself and say, I wouldn't use me, but God uses people who have issues. Thank be to God that issues-based users. Oh, I'm a user. I'm used by God. God uses me, and I use the Spirit in order to break the hold of the enemy. Let's look at the problem now because, because the enemy is going to always pick out the anointed to pick on. And Peter, I got, I got to get into the text. Peter was, was arrested on trumped up charges. That, you, you, that word mean anything to y'all? Unreal, untrue charges. Mm, that word is synonymous with somebody I know. Trumped up, trumped up charges, unreal. <laughs> Untrue. The big lie. <laughs> Anybody heard of that lately? Consequences then is that they were put, he was put in prison as a political ploy in order to produce an acquired desire to persecute the people of God. They put him in jail in order to give them an opportunity to show folk that the folk I want to kill, God can't do nothing about it. They put him in jail. They put him in jail. The political folk put him in jail. That's why that's why you got to be careful how you mix politics with spirituality. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the politician, the people, and, and the preacher. The politician, the people, and the preacher. And so they wanted to see a killing. They arrested the preacher to enhance the people because the politicians wanted political mileage. Oh, I wish I had help. So they used Peter as a pawn, thinking if we do away with him, we can, do, we can kill two birds with one stone. They put him in prison with expectations. Now, I'm going to shout right here, and I'm going to get happy right here. I want you to look at somebody, and I want you to tell them this. Whatever... The devil, the devil expects to happen, expects to, happen to you, to you after, Easter, after Easter, not going to happen. <laughs> Whatever! Oh, I'm going to get happy right here because the devil got some plans for you after Easter, but God just told me to tell you that the devil's plans 
has been canceled. I, I, need about, I need about 10 folk to jump up and holler, thank God for the cancellation. What was going to happen to you was going to wreck your world. What was going to happen to you was almost going to take your life. But God canceled. God canceled the devil's plan. Whatever he had planned for you is no longer going to work. I wish I had a witness. That's enough right there to shout on. That's enough right there to give God some glory on. Because the devil wants you dead, but he can't kill who God wants alive. Lift your hands and say, I'm going to live and not die. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I need somebody to holler, I shall not die. I'm not going to die. I want you to look at somebody and tell them, don't die. Stop even talking about death. Lord, waiting on the Lord to come get me. He won't find me waiting. I want you to look at somebody and say, don't talk about dying. Talk about living. I want you to repeat after me. I have too much to live for. And I can't die now. Come on, say it with me. I cannot die now. I got too much to live for. I'm going to break something tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break some depression and some oppression and some possession because the enemy wants you to live a life where you're crying about yourself. But I came to tell you, put it away. Wipe them tears from your eyes. You're a child of victory and not a child of defeat. I came tonight to tell the devil, discouragement is a downer, but God is an upper. And I'm going up and not down. I want you to, I want y'all to holler with me tonight. I can't go under because I'm going over. I'm going over this Jordan. I'm I'm going over this mountain. I'm I'm going over this problem. How many believe God gonna let you get over it? Uh oh, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to go, but somebody about to get over it. You've been crying too long about the same thing anyway. It's time for you to get over it. I dare you to. I dare you. I dare you to high five somebody and tell them I'm over it now. As of the night, I'm not crying anymore about it. I'm not arguing. I'm over. I feel like dancing. Don't play with me. If you know you're over it, lift your hands and holler, I'm over it. You can't even have a good relationship because you're still dealing with the last one you had. And the devil is a lie. Get over it. Get over it. Get over it. You ought to be better off than you are now. And you still arguing and fussing over the same mess that you let go. Let them go. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I need to talk to somebody who's over it. You want to live under it, but I'm going to live over it. Let it go, let it go, let it go. You stuck with the same thing. Jailed by the past. Stuck. Imprisoned. Bound by chains of oppression. And the enemy got you messed up. So you can't get out. Peter was in jail on charges that were not true. I keep hearing the Bible say, but the church prayed. I need you to repeat after me. What do you do about somebody that you know is stuck? You, you know they're stuck because they can't seem to shake it. Every time you talk about, uh, you, you have a conversation with them. Now, anytime you come have conversation with someone, 
And every time the same subject come up, look at somebody and tell them they stuck. I'm getting ready to dance by myself. You could be talking about rain. And they, and they get back to the same subject. So much so that you almost say, I hate to even go around. Oh, but I'm about to unstick you tonight. Come on in. I want somebody to holler. I'm just talking tonight. I'm, I'm not trying to formally do anything. I'm just following the spirit tonight. I'm, my stuck days are over. I've been stuck long enough. Come on in here. I, I've been in this long enough. I've been crying over this long enough. My stuck days. See, some people want you to sit outside the gates. But why sit we here and die? I need somebody to say, I'm getting ready to get up. Peter was kept in jail between four, 12 people to guard one man. They thought they had him. Mm. I said they thought they thought they had him. We got enough people to guard him. We got enough prison to hold him. And he's not going anywhere, but the devil is a lie. My stuck days are about to be over. Because something was happening. And it started in Galilee last night. Okay, all right, all right. Y'all don't want to help me. It started in Galilee last night. Peter was stuck in prison. But, 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 the church got to pray in. And when the church prays, something is going to happen. Mm. I feel the Holy Ghost now. Somebody ought to lift your hand and say, when the church prays, demons are going to come out. I, I know folk don't talk about demons anymore. But if you don't believe that the devil exists now, something wrong with you. There's a devil out there that's after your child. There's a devil out there that's got your child stuck in something that they can't get out of. And the Lord said, come by tonight to tell you how to unstick the stuck person in your life. The Bible said about the time that they found out that Peter was in jail the church got to praying and uh, a praying church is a powerful church I need y'all to stay with me for a minute come on and repeat after me if you pray you can stay if you fast you can last if you take it you can make it y'all didn't help myself if you pray you can stay if you fast, you can last. If you take it, you can make it. Can I get a witness here that the devil may have had you bound, but your stuck days are about to be over. The problem that you thought you'd never get out of, I came to let you know tonight that the church prayed. They weren't gossiping, they were praying. They weren't talking about folk, they were praying. They weren't trying to impress nobody, but they were praying. They weren't trying to make anybody think that they were smart, they were praying. And when the church prays, something is going to happen. Is it anybody in here tonight that's got somebody you know that the devil got them stuck in depression? Stuck in an attitude, stuck in anger, stuck in a situation that they can't get out of. Is it anybody got some children in your life 
that the enemy got them stuck with the wrong crowd. But I came by to unstick some folk tonight, for there's power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. I said, that's power, wonder working power. I need you to lift your hand and say, right now, I believe that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. Lift your hands and holler, I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He pitied every groan. Come on and lift your hand as I'm coming out of this. I've been stuck in this sickness long enough. I've been sick so long that I don't know how it's going to end. And some of y'all have given up on healing. But I came by to tell you tonight that healing is still possible. Because I know somebody that's Jehovah Roi. He's a healer of the first magnitude. And I don't care what people say. God is able to do abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Because I got some power to break the hold of the enemy. They got down on their knees and they started praying and they started calling on the Lord. Lord, Peter is in jail. And I don't know whose name you ought to call tonight, but you ought to call him by name, Lord. My child is in jail. They're incarcerated by idea. They're incarcerated by situation. Dope got them messed up. And I heard the Apostle Paul put it like this. That when I would do good, evil is always, I feel something now. Evil is always present. And I find another law warring in my members. Bringing me to the law of the captivity of sin. But oh, wretched man that I am. I don't mind saying it sometimes. I'm wretched from the head to my feet. But thanks be to God who giveth us the victory. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Somebody ought to come on here now. We're getting ready to get some folk delivered. We're getting ready to break some hold that's been holding folk a long time. The fragile nature of the, of the life that they live. That, that's hard to break it. But I came to break it tonight. The chains that's holding Peter has got to come off of him. The chains that's holding your son has got to come off of him. The chains that's holding your daughter has got to come off of her. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Lift up your head and give God some glory tonight because we're getting ready to get some folk unstuck. They've been down long enough. They've been depressed long enough. And it's time for a breakthrough. And I need somebody to holler, it's time for a breakthrough. I command the devil to take his hand off of your mind, causing you to be frustrated. I command the enemy to take his hand off of your head, keeping you down and depressed. But right now in the name of Jesus, I command you to be unstuck. I command your way to be clear. I command every devil to leave you alone. I command the enemy to get out of your house. I'm tired. Oh, I'm tired of going through the same thing. But it stops tonight. It stops tonight. I want you to high five somebody and tell them it stops tonight. I've gone far enough. I've had enough now. No more pain. No more down. Hey! No more situation. But I'm coming out with my hands up. Oh, I'm, 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 
Ah, the Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost now. Ah, the Jesus. I surrender. And I I wish I had some help here. But all of him, I freely give. Lift up your heads and start hollering, I'm coming out. I've been stuck for a while, but God says I'm free. Wait a minute, whom the sun makes free is free indeed. I've been made free. I didn't want to be free, but now I've been made free. Lift your hand and say, I'm coming out of every demonic situation. You can't even sleep at night because the devil keep messing with you. And you want to get some sleep, but you can't even close your eyes. I rebuke that devil that won't let you close your eyes and get a good night's sleep. I need somebody to repeat after me in the name of Jesus. I command the enemy to take his hand off of me now. I bind him everywhere. Lift your head and holler, yeah! Come on and say it like you mean it. I said, lift your hand and said, I'm out of this. The last night that I'm going to grapple with this, the last night I'm going to fight with this, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wild of the devil. And when you're done, I feel him now. When you're done all the stand, Becky, I feel like screaming here. But when you're done all the stand, he says, stand. Is there anybody want to stand tonight? Lift your hand and say, I'm going to stand against every demon. I'm going to stand against every devil. God wants me to be free. You don't have to live like that. You don't have to live like this. You don't have to be overcome by the enemy. God said tonight, you may be kept in the prison, but your prison doors are about to come open. I said your prison doors are about to come open. Your life. Your life. I'm going. I gotta get out of here. But Chuck, I saw something. When I walked in church tonight, I saw something. I saw the devil wanting to surround this property. But when I walked in, the reason he got to surround it, because what's getting ready to be released, if he don't stop it now, he won't be able to stop it later. And what he's trying to do is stop it on you. But the devil is a lie. I told him when I walked through the door, you are already defeated. You are already, I'm tired, yes. I said you are already defeated. The enemy is already defeated. I need somebody to holler, I'm free. Y'all ain't doing it yet. The Lord said, you're about to walk out of it. I'm done. He said, you're about to walk out of what's been holding you down for the last 10 years. You're going to step out of it tonight. 